Hi, I'm Pox. I'm Couch Guy. And you're watching the Two Smart Guys Show, where every week we bring you the latest and greatest in gadgets, gizmos, and fun little things you can hack and play with and make make your own. All the toys that everyone wants to play with. And uh, we're cooking up something delicious this week. We're uh, talking about Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. I've been waiting for Raspberry Pi for so long, and I'm jealous <laughs> that you have one before I do. Uh, they announced it quite a while back, about like four or five months ago. Um, a thirty-five dollar. Well, I think the original was like twenty-five dollars, right? We should we should explain um, what it is so people don't think that we're talking about an edible dessert. I, my wife was so disappointed that she couldn't she? eat it. <laughs> She's like, like, "This is a really small raspberry pie yet." Oh. She's like, "This box is really small for having raspberry pie in it." Yeah. <laughs> um, so raspberry pie is a card size like what is it roughly about the size of a uh, deck of cards yeah it's like a pack of smokes or something yeah <laughs> uh, so it's about that size of a card but it is a media center it's like a board for a media center and you can plug hdmi into it and what else you got hdmi plug-in uh usb plug-in and do you have an ethernet plug-in yeah you got ethernet and you've also got analog audio and you've got a uh, sd card reader and okay, so analog audio and SD card and power reader, so by can um, attach data to it. Micro power via micro USB, so you don't have to have like special power adapter or anything. Which is really cool because that means that when you power your TV on, it actually can power. If you have a USB port on your TV, which most of them do now, you could actually power this from your TV. Yeah, it's uh, it, it it's running ARM. It's a system on a chip. Uh, so there's a bunch of different Linux distros that people have put out, and on next week's show, we're going to show you my favorite distro for like just every device we hack lately or the past couple of years is XBMC. Which, well, it's a great media center. <laughs> yeah, great for media center. it was uh, the Xbox Media Center originally. I don't know what the X stands for now, but <laughs> it, it's existential. It's uh, what it is the open source um, version of Boxy. It's what yeah. the Boxy was forked off of and made into. So it's, it's kind of the base layer that everything that, you know. And uh, Plex, I think, also is a forked version of XBMC. Well, when you talk about open source, there's a lot of, you know, places and things like that could, that could branch off from, you know, say they really have their roots from there. Because, you know, some of the things like Google TV and things like that really could have had their, you know, since it is an open source base that Android runs off of, really could take in some inspiration from what XBMC lay the groundwork of right so um the cool thing is they're 35 bucks for uh model b i don't even think they make model a anymore um, no i think model a was a, a, a prototype yeah the, the the difference was no ethernet only one usb port and then people like yeah. well you gotta have the ethernet and yeah, you really need another to usb ports <laughs> so they went ahead and did that uh, the funny thing is that I need help with, and you, maybe you can help in the comments below, is I want to make this my, my poxy box, and I need something to put it in, <laughs> so it's not just naked. I, I, will it fit in an Altoids can? No, it's too big for an Altoids can. Because that would be an awesome, and it's very, awesome place to it's put it. It's very conductive. We'd have to line it with something. No, but you can imagine just the heat sink side. Like, if you were to put some heat sink on it, and then put a heat, like cut a hole and put a heat sink on the outside of the, um, the Altoids tin. Yeah, I don't fun. think this thing generates like any heat at all. There are, there are no heat sinks on any of the chips. Well, um, you put it inside of an Altoid tin, it might generate some heat. It's, you know, for, for being low cost, let's talk about the specs real quick. It's um, a system on a chip, Broadcom, ARM 11, 700 megahertz. Uh, wow. and, it, and it can do 1080p output h264 40 megabit stream so it could actually do 3d 1080p off of this which is wow. pretty amazing uh open gl 2.0 and uh, it's about the equivalent they said of an original xbox uh in terms of like 3d sure. hardware raspberry pi it is a computer uh <laughs> plug it into a tv get a usb keyboard mouse um sd card throw a linux on there you got a computer it's you know what and it sounds to me like somebody who was very uh, technically inclined would be very able to turn this into a very small gaming platform for, uh, 
you know, with a controller system that maybe talked over Wi-Fi, um, you know, something in that sense. Over at um, DEF CON, there was a guy using his, his to make a little hacking device to make a power strip that, you know, when you plug your phone into it, it would siphon off all the information and then wirelessly to transmit it back to him. <laughs> wow. Uh, it was pretty, it was pretty clever. A um, lot of different things that it can do. They have, like, different boards you can put onto it so you can use it for, like, an Arduino to control things. Yeah. Um, there's a special LED board that you can get for it so you can do these cool light drawings, like, so you uh, set, like, a long exposure and then you can... Persistence of motion? Yeah, yeah. Uh, really cool stuff, but basically this was just an introduction and I want uh, ideas in the below in the comments. What do you want to see? What do you want us to try and tackle with one of these things? I might get one for a couch guy and maybe raggle if, they're in, if they want and they can play with them. Yeah, I, you know, I'll tell you what, the first thing I want to try and see how it does, it, how well it does the same video um, streaming 1080p. Let's, let's, so let's try the basics and see how it does on the different ports. Like, um, we've got Ethernet, we've got SD card, and we've got USB jack. Let's see how it plays the different ones and find out how well it, it streams from it. Because we also have the streaming ability off of the Ethernet that with XBMC should be all the same quality based on you know your router speed and things like that. But shouldn't have that much of a difficulty doing any of them. Just kind of just hard pressing it to do its its work. Yeah, over over my iPhone, which is um, 802.11n, uh, and my router's n, and the the Ethernet on this, it displayed 1080p. Yeah. And it did it pretty smooth and looked pretty sharp. So. And it's a pretty straightforward um, install on XBMC. So. Yeah, and um, well, and XBMC is pretty. You know, it's not as unfriendly as it used to be. How's is that a nice way to put that? Yeah, yeah, it's very friendly now. Um, in fact, the, there's basically an executable that you run on the SD card, and it gets it all ready to go. But I want to cover a whole episode on it because there's a lot of little things in configuring it and setting up your network f so you can access the shares and uh, just a few settings to be aware of. So stay tuned next week. Um, every Monday we do new shows at twosmartguys.com. And please subscribe to the feed. It helps us out immensely. Yes. The more the merrier. Bye. This has been a Two Smart Guys.